Hello and welcome to Seminole Game Time Florida State Baseball. I'm your host Tom Block and we are in Clearwater, Florida, the home spring training home of the Philadelphia Phillies here at beautiful Bright House Fields. This is a chance for the Seminole baseball players to experience the thrill of a lifetime as they get to play an exhibition game against major leaguers. Our cameras are here to chronicle the action and we'll have all the highlights for you as Florida State takes on the Philadelphia Phillies. It's up next, stay with us right here on Seminole Game Time, Florida State Baseball. The journey to face their major league foes began the day beforehand as the Knolls boarded their bus for the trip down to Clearwater. Ooh, good door. Show me his hand. Tell me what he has. Does he have any twos? Did you shuffle these cards? Or, or what? Have <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you gotta get oh, yeah. this. <laughs> See that? You going with us? The Seminoles awoke to an early breakfast at their headquarters, the Safety Harbor Resort and Spa. <laughs> I just love Weaver's interview yesterday. Justin Weaver. Well, I'm really excited. Um, I'm super stoked. <laughs> I was like, why are we going to surf? We're going to play baseball. <laughs> what up, fam? I'm, I'm twe tweeting that I'm getting videoed every five seconds. <laughs> Why did you do that? Real. <laughs> hey, what's your phone oh, yeah, name? What's it? Moo Training course. <laughs> One builder would know how to tear tape. I know all the young guys that are real excited about today to get out here, you know, meet the big leaders, play against them, and you know, be in this atmosphere. So I mean, it's just it's it's fun all around. We got Luke Weaver throwing. I'm, I'm sure he's gonna come out throwing about 97. He, he's real pumped. We call him uh, Justin Weaver. Come on, Justin Weaver. Yeah, Weeb Weebs. When I first heard that I was gonna start, I just Kind of was blown away because I know the major league starters get to you know start the game off for a couple innings, so I have a chance to, to throw against them. I still feel like it's the first time I came down here. Uh, feels like Christmas morning. We see all those bats in there, and we're all picking them out. We all feel like little kids down there. How about that piece of wood? Uh, I got Cliff Lee. I got Cliff Lee. Uh, last year I didn't see one of him, but this year I got him. And uh, hopefully I get some hits with this thing, man. That was scurry. Hello. Perfect rep. Four. Look at that, this is a perfect round. It was almost mind-blowing uh, to an extent just because, you know, last year I was, uh, I was playing in high school and you know playing the state tournament and stuff and then you know I, I get out there on first in the later innings and uh, Jim Tomey gets a walk and you know he's you know five feet away from me it's it's I mean it's mind-blowing 
it's almost like it's a dream. You know, you're going out there and you're playing against these guys that you see play on TV that are just like these major league guys that you never thought you'd be on the same field as. And so when you go into that game, it's just it's all surreal. It's just an amazing feeling. We have the signal for our first pitch, and in it comes. And it's going to be a strike called on the outside corner from Austin Hyatt to Sherman Johnson. The only thing I can say is that I was, I was just smiling the whole time. I was, just, I was happy to be out there. But when I said play ball, I just kind of was looking down, looked up, and it's like, all right, let's, let's have fun with it. I know Luke Weaver's favorite uh, player was uh, Juan Pierre. He said striking him out was a, was a high. He said he, did, he felt bad, though, because, I mean, he wanted him to do well. But <laughs> he came in the dugout, we told him to smile. And uh, he felt great. Oh boy! We <laughs> were smiling the whole time on the mound. Juan Pierre, he's uh, he's kind of under the radar in the big leagues. I got a chance to go face him, and that was just a memory inside itself. And uh, striking out was just, I mean, unbelievable. I mean, I would never thought of that. You were just like nothing to laugh. That's awesome. Yeah, as hard as I could. I know, that was gas. You can ask everybody in the dugout. Like, I was doing nothing but smiling for the next two or three innings. So it was just a great day. It was one of, one of the greater days in my life, I would say. How happy, how happy are you you're done now? Hey, Weaver's on, on the on yeah. He's still smiling. Oh, you're going to break your face, bro. I'll have a smile all day. Oh, set, set. How, how was it facing uh, your favorite player, Juan Pierre? <laughs> wow. It was, it was a good start. No, I didn't want to strike him out and make him feel bad in case we're going to be buds one day. But, no, it was a great experience. Say JV! Luke Weaver, everybody. From the first inning on, the excitement in the dugout remained at a fever pitch. on your outing today? No, not really. I feel like when pitchers know they're not pitching, they're a lot more relaxed and you'll see a lot of the pitchers joking around more with each other and the position players. Scott Seitz is the third founder of Team Husky, which involves me, Hunter Scanling, and Scott Seitz. And the pitch, foul. Ooh. How about the double off the wall? I already told Bush, Steve tipped the hitter off and guy was sitting on it. So we're blaming it on Steve. Yeah, Steve's fault. All right. Oh, no. Scott said that you tipped off the catcher when he hit that deep ball off the fence. What do you have to say about that? Uh, catcher love. When you're in the dugout yourself, it's, it's a day to relax mentally and physically. But at the same time, you know, you want to win. You want all your, your fellow teammates to do well. So you're there picking them up. You're there, you know, cheering them on, giving them hints about this and that, helping the hitters out if you see anything. So, you know, you're just a, I guess you could say, kind of an extra coach. Well, it's a nice song, dude. Good job. No runs. One hit. Oh, boy. Scott Seitz, ladies and gentlemen. The man. I got two deals, so Delta Tom, I'm supposed to go streaking. The three one, he takes the hack. So, uh, see what Sherman does here. Oh, that's a strike. I'm tired, just has it out. Sure. He's in an old two hole, but I believe in him. <laughs> I'm a believer. We don't, a we believer. don't, we don't bail on our I think we all believe By the way, that. Justin Weber, that's the guy that started. Hey, that a boy. We got a base runner. We got one yard. What's he going to do on this pitch right here? Fastball. Is he going to strike him out? Yeah. You think so? What do you think about uh, Seth's ability to hit a home run right here? I think 
you got Shrek when the iron's hot, and his iron right now is just ice cold. Um, if anything, he's going oppo. Little droplings from the sky down the line. Max, just putting down another teammate. Thank you. He did hit a double. Can you talk about that? I mean, he's a starting right fielder for the Phillies. I, I wouldn't expect anything less. The most fun I've had is this year. You know, the pitcher's BP uh, was pretty impressive on Hunter's team. Uh, Hunter's team showed up today. Bush's team didn't know. We did show up. The wind was blowing in from right field, so couldn't really. Had to try and go opposite field, so. so tough day for us lefties. Mike Martin's squad stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with the defending National League East champs for five innings. One highlight of the scoreless tie came in the sixth when Adam Simmons fanned future Hall of Famer Jim Tome. Jim Tome, a Hall of Famer in my book, five-time All-Star, 604 career bombs. Here's the pitch. And he takes a hack. And he, oh, Simmons. Get it down, Simmons. Get it down. Come on, Simmons, you can do it. Uh, get out of here, ball. Get out of here, ball. Good, good. <laughs> oh, Simbone. Three and two. Does Simmons leave one down the plate or does he block him? What's he going to do? And here comes the pitch. Hey, struck him out. The guy with 604 career home runs, and Simmons strikes him out. Simmons is definitely on cloud nine right now. The fact that he struck him out, I mean, that's a, a to me, that's a no doubt Hall of Famer, I mean, to everybody. But, uh, I mean, that was, that's a moment that Adam, all of us will remember forever. To have memories like that from that game are big in our lives, and, you know, to tell Maybe one day tell our kids and tell our grandkids about like the day we faced the Hall of Famer. So that's, that'll be awesome for us. Uh, well, we were all just you know ragging him and uh, you know just really excited for him. I mean you know that's awesome. Just that that feat is just it's special. It's something he'll remember his whole life. And uh, you know I mean we all love Simmons. He's a great kid. And uh, you know he was just he was all smiles. Let us know how it started. I started off good with Tommy, obviously, but then I got a little trouble throwing strikes, but finally got a ground ball, got out of it. How did, how did it feel uh, striking out a for sure Hall of Famer in my book? Felt good, dude. Nasty, nasty two seam. Can't hit it. Nasty two seam? Yeah, I, I like it. I like it. I like it. You're throwing cheddar, man. Thanks, man. You said 97. 98, I think it was. 98? All right. Last cool. pitch. All right. Adam Simmons, ladies and gentlemen. kind of hard to believe that, that we struck him out, you know, that you can strike out a guy like that because you almost think of him as this guy, this god that can't, you know, nothing can go wrong and then when he strikes out you're, 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 you're kind of surprised but at the same time, you know, it's a really cool feeling for the pitcher, you know. Well, when you play baseball, everybody's really kind of on the same level, you know, I mean, yes, there's college, there's, you know, the minor leagues and there's the big leagues, but we all love to play the game. And I think, I think the great thing, the great thing is we all uh, have that passion and whether you succeed or fail, we're all out there trying our best. No matter if you're a 20 year vet or a young kid in college, you know, that pitcher can get anybody out and as the hitter you can also get hit. So it makes it kind of cool, it makes it kind of fun. Later in that frame, Scott Pacednik finally dented the scoreboard with an RBI infield single. Florida State answered in the seventh when Jace Boyd scampered home on a wild pitch to knock the score. JB.
What did you think about the game today, Devin? I thought that uh, it was a lot of fun, man. Uh, you know, I think we're the better team. And I think uh, it's kind of a shocker that it's a 1-1 ball game in the bottom of the seventh inning. And we're also here with Michael Seta. Michael, you're from Miami. First time playing the Phillies. It's a great experience. How do you, how do you put this into words? Speechless. Speechless? Yeah. There you have it, folks. Oh, we got Peter Orr here. Yeah, he, he made an error. Oh, he made an error, but he just hit a seed. Swing and a miss. Strike two. If we give Lee Brandt an AB there, you think you're going to go bomb squad? Oppo? Oppo Taco. Yeah. How many times do you get to say you, you gave up a home run to a major leaguer and a Hall of Famer at that? And you're in college? Oh. Oh. God. Oh. Dang, I almost called a ground ball double play. Say goodnight, uh, Kevin. Good night, Kevin. Kevin. It worked! Here with my friend Brian Bush. Uh, he's going to get his first at bat as a Seminole in a game today. What do you think about it? Very excited. Yeah? Probably going to go up there like rookie of the year, just stand in the box as far as away as possible. Are you going to swing? I'm definitely going to swing the bat once. Are you going to hit a home run? No. <laughs> That's a totally different story. Good luck, my friend. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Not nervous. Just don't want to get killed up there. <laughs> Boomer is, uh, he's, I'd say he takes the crown for the funniest guy on our team. Uh, <laughs> It's fun, you know. I mean, DH and I'm I'm in the dugout a lot, um, so I try to I try to stand by him as much as I can, just for sheer enjoyment through the game. So scared right now. So scared. There's definitely a big energy in the uh, in the dugout, even though you know the game was basically over, and then you put in Bush. There was just this energy that came about. I actually played with Bush in high school, and he he used to be a third batter in high school. He used to be a real good hitter, so I knew he could hit. Wish me luck, and don't get killed up there. A little nervous at first. I mean, first time I stepped into a box in four years. First, first of bat in four years. A little nervous. Don't be nervous. You got a bat in your hand. First pitch I swung, swung at. Probably shouldn't have, but wasn't even close. <laughs> what? Bat slip. Bat slip. <laughs> I think the catcher might have told the pitcher I haven't swung the bat in four years, so kind of just laid it in there and I got to hit it. I tried my best. <laughs> Dude, I would have stroked that thing if I saw again. I thought it was so much faster. He got up there and he said he was just going to go up there hacking and he got a pitch to hit and he hit it back up the middle but we were timing him down the line and I swear he ran like a 3-5 but they said it was like a 5-5. Five five, but. He looked like he was flying. <laughs> um, I got into the dugout and Mike Martin was holding a stopwatch. Dude, that's fast, isn't it? You broke five. That's good, right? Uh, a woman in a wheelchair runs five. <laughs> hey, I'll take it. He almost snuck one through. I think if he would have hustled a little harder and not been so lazy, he could have got it. But we're all happy for him, and it was fun being uh, them being mic'd up. They kind of brought a fun atmosphere in the dugout. Uh, that was the best experience of my life. I talked to Shane Victorino for a little while, and um, he was just asking me, uh, you know, how my year is going, how I'm liking, you know, Florida State and classes and, and school, and you know, he just, you know, he said, just take it, you know, game by game and um, pitch by pitch, and you know, it's baseball is baseball, you know, whether you're in high school or the big leagues, you know, I mean, it's the same, it's the same game I've played my whole life, so that's pretty much what he told me, just enjoy every minute of it. It's, uh, it's fun interacting with them for the game, having a good time, having some laughs. It's what it's all about, you know, it's about making them enjoy their experience and, uh, and obviously for us to be here and for Florida State to come in and give us the time to play a game. I mean, obviously I know they're in the midst of their, you know, uh, college season and, uh, you know, going and doing what they're doing and traveling as much as they do. Um, obviously coming down and playing us here in Clearwater, um, I've, I've, you know, it's been awesome. Uh, in fact, growing up in Hawaii, I, I was a big uh, Seminole fan. Uh, you know, it was my, it was actually Florida State was my dream school. Uh, I wanted to be a no. Uh, 
Firstly, uh, you know, I, I, I ended up you know, going and playing uh, professional baseball, but that was my dream school. I really wanted to go to Florida State. You can definitely tell that they respect us as a, as a college, you know, as, as who we are and at our level. And uh, there's a mutual respect there, and, and you have to give respect to get respect. And, I mean, we obviously have nothing but respect for them because of who they are and the way that they, they control themselves and the way that they are with the game. And you can tell how they got there. Unfortunately, there would be no fairy tale ending as the Phillies played at five runs in the seventh, eventually handing the Knolls a 6-1 to one defeat. But the scoreboard couldn't dampen spirits in the dugout as the Knolls reveled in their major league dreams. You can tell in the young guys' eyes that they had a blast playing against big leaguers, playing against guys they see on TV every day, playing against guys who play the game the right way. And, you know, just, just hearing them talk about it and reflect on what happened, you know, makes you smile and look back like that was, that was me three or four years ago. I kind of had no idea what the atmosphere would be like. Um, the surrounding, the fans, like we had a lot of fans out there to support us. And uh, it was a great game all the way through. I was surprised how what we did. Uh, I had sufficient staff and kept with them the whole game. They got some runs there uh, towards the end. but. It was a great experience, and I mean, it's something I'll remember for the rest of my life. That was fun. Look forward to some of this weather hopefully creeping into tally, and we'll get a chance to play a little baseball tomorrow. Good job. See you tomorrow. Oh, guys. Welcome back, and thanks so much for joining us on Seminole Game Time. This was the experience of a lifetime for the Florida State baseball program. And even though they didn't emerge victorious against the Philadelphia Phillies, they certainly won't forget the day they spent at Bright House Field here in Clearwater. Thanks again for joining us. Remember to follow Florida State Athletics anytime you can log on online to Seminoles.com. That's it for now, and I'll see you next time right here.